Hello there. Once again, Santon from Antonimo Bay. Thank you for stopping by the collection room. Uh, today we're looking at some Gen 13 comics. You guys may have noticed that the last few videos have featured a few more Gen 13s than regular uh, videos do. It's because I've been on something of a kick. Um, it's come to my attention that I, I used to appreciate the series a lot. And it, now it just seems like it's a completely un unappreciated series. Like nobody, nobody ever talks about Gen 13 anymore. It seems to get no press. Um, not, not anywhere that I've seen, uh, they're, they're not beating down the door to make a Gen 13 movie. Uh, so, uh, as, as a property like that, I was like, yeah, I, th I think I will grab a few of these. I always had fond memories of Gen 13. And what I have here is, I think 43 issues is what showed up. Um, and I'm just going to kind of flip through them real quick. So you kind of get an idea of what I got. Um, this is Gen 13, number 14, complicated. It does have some discoloration on it. It's it's worn. Uh, I don't really care about that kind of stuff anymore. Uh, but this particular issue uh, is fantastic. It it goes in the in the top five favorite comic book uh, covers of all time for me. Uh, so there's there's a few in there. Uh, probably not a lot that you would recognize. And maybe I'll do a video of that someday. Um, but yeah, this this I've always loved this. It's so '90s. Kind of reminds me of the movie Clueless, which is also so 90s, and everything about Gen 13 is so uh, 90s. And so, uh, I don't even remember what happens in this issue. Like, it, that doesn't even matter at this point. It's just one of my favorite covers. Uh, and of course, it's Roxy, it's it's Free Fall, uh, going to school. I don't know, I just love the cover. It's It's cute, it's 90s, beautiful cover. Um, this was a mixed lot of Gen 13, so we also have a Gen 13 bootleg number 13. I remember they, it's like they made too many of this issue. There was like tons of these. Like you see these everywhere, like this one. Um, uh, before that was Gen 13 number 12. Um, this I thought was a much cooler cover. She's in a giant rock man hand or a giant gorilla hand. I can't really tell. I was thinking it was a rock man, yeah. But, I don't know. I always like this cover. Uh, Gen 13 is part 2 of 2. And I have uh, the first one, too. Zoinks, yo! It's Shaggy in the top top's corner there. Um, and, yeah, it is it is this total Shaggy ripoff. Oh, I always thought that was pretty cool. I always liked that uh, Gen 13 always played fast and loose with the... Uh, pop culture references. Uh, issue number 11 of Bootleg. Um, this is Bootleg number 8, uh, part 1 of 3. Um, this is their awful covers. I hated their anime covers, and like it doesn't match the art style. In oh, it does match the art style inside. That's even worse. Um, I don't even hate anime, but I don't like this anime. And I also don't like it, because Gen 13 is not an anime. Like, this should not be a manga. I'm sorry, I should be saying manga. Uh, but I, I hate the manga covers. Uh, that is the worst part of Gen 13. Um, issue number seven of Bootleg. Uh, I believe this one was like a, a fairy tale story. There was quite a few of those. Um, fairy tale stories. Time travel and whatnot. Or dream sequences. I, I, I wasn't a big a fan of Bootleg as I was the, the standard series. Here you got Bootleg number four. Yeah, they gave me a pretty good run of Bootlegs. I can't complain. but And I will probably go through some of them uh, more thoroughly. It's just um, this one was definitely, if I remember right, a dream sequence. Anyway. Uh, bootleg number two. Does that mean I have... Uh, yeah, I got a pretty good run, complete run of Bootlegs. I don't know how many issues it ran. That's two, and this would be uh, bootleg number one. I have seen this one before. Like, I've had it before in my collection. Most of these I probably have, but uh, Gen 13 was something I sold uh, pretty much all of when uh, when I sold out of everything or cut back or everything. There was there was a lot of selling going on in Gen 13. Uh, they, they got cut, so. Um, Gen 13, number 27. I'm trying to remember... When exactly they started going with the, an, the manga covers. 
I want to say it's like after issue 50. But oh my gosh, they just, I, I hated that. Like, why did you change the art style and the whole feel of the book? Seems stupid. Anyway, uh, number 23. We got Caitlin's head in a vice. Guest starring Grifter. Yeah, it's still crazy to me that they never had any, like, uh, good action figures from this uh, series. Uh, 22. Still fantastic art um, up to 22. And I can't remember exactly when the series uh, peaked and then died out. And then they gave me these. These are Wildstorm things. Chris Claremont. I, I'm not aware of these. I, I wasn't aware of these. I wasn't sure what these were. Um, I don't know when they came out. I'm not that interested. Like, I don't know. Some people love Chris Claremont. I'm not. I'm not like a diehard Chris Claremont guy. The art looks weak, in my opinion, for what I expect from Gen 13. Brighter colors. This is like a wild storm thing. Um, Two ninety five. Trying to think of what year that puts this at. There was no information in here on year. So, but if you got Kane and Brock and all these guys wrestling, that probably puts it in the early two thousands. Uh, which is be when I faded out of comics. So I don't know. Uh, they did give me a couple of these, uh, the Wildstorm Gen 13 stuff. And I just, well, I don't care. Uh, not not the reason why I bought the lot. I wanted old school, 90s, uh, goofy Gen 13, early 2000s Gen 13. Anything but the uh, a weird, darker Wildstorm version of it. I have no interest. And also, I... Not a wild Chris Claremont fan, so. Uh, Roxy Unplugged, Gen 13 Bootleg Part 2 of 2. It is funny, on all of these, they always have to tell you, like, oh, it's 1 of 2, 2 of 2, uh, 1 of 3, 2 of 3. It's like, well, just make it a comic. Like, you don't have to tell us the chronology of everything. It's the next issue. Doesn't that make enough sense? Uh, Gen 13 Bootleg Number 14. See, that's, I love that. It's, th that's the kind of art that they'd throw in these that I always liked. You got Lucille Ball and some great caricatures going on here. I think that was supposed to be Lucille Ball and, um, oh, the guy from the Honeymooners, Jackie Gleason. Fun stuff, lighthearted stuff. That's what Gen 13 is supposed to be, not not whatever this is. Uh, this is regular Gen 13 21. I'm, I'm thinking if I have a solid run of 1 through 30 of Gen 13, that's probably good enough. Or 1 through 50. I, I don't know when things started to get weird, when they started going manga, uh, but certainly I don't need those. I just, like, I can stop at a good point. No one in space can hear you scream. Tied up by aliens. Sometimes grunge is really creepy. Beavis and Butthead do America. Now, there was a show. There was a movie. I think I actually saw it in theaters. Gen 13, number 18. Classic stuff going on there. You got your image, your your 1990s image suits. Roxy is getting a tattoo that looks to be on her butt, which I don't know if that's legal uh, due to her age in the series. Uh, issue 15, fighting a giant brained monkey. That's a thing that happens fairly often in a lot of comics. 
you don't think about it, but fighting giant monkeys is a pretty, pretty common reoccurring theme. Even intelligent ones. It just tends, tends to keep happening. Uh, we'll just give these a quick run through. I did recently went through a 13, issue 13, and there is three issue 13s. And every issue 13 apparently gives you a different story. So 13A, uh, you have crossovers with Archie, Jughead, Betty, Veronica. And then uh, 13B, you have the Ninja Turtles. Um, and I think finally 13C, uh, there's like Wolverine and Spawn and a lot of stuff. So it's kind of neat, but it also it's a pain to try and collect because you need three issues of 13. But you need 13A, B, and C. Crossover. I think this is a crossover with... Uh, I can't remember who. Uh, so the first five issues of Gen 13 were like gonzo great covers. Uh, and issue number four, issue number three, these were just perfect examples of it. probably do a run through of the first uh, few issues. You got a big big double page there of Caitlin in a jungle uniform. You got some different art style going on there. Not sure how I feel about it. Very, very cartoony art style going on here. Very weird, but good stuff. Alright, and then we have, there's Gen 13 number one. This is Gen 13 number three. And keep in mind, regular series Gen 13 was the second series. So the first series was, I think, only five or six issues long. And it was uh, their origin story, basically. Captured by Amazons. And then they have the regular series. So uh, some of these, they're still learning their powers, but otherwise they've kind of kind of come to understand their powers, so... Um, Gen 13, number one. And I think this is number one from the regular series books. Rainmaker, Roxy, looking very, very 90s with a backwards flat cap. Um, Gen 13, annual number one. follow along and get to annuals. Never been a big annual collector, but it's a thing that they always make. So, uh, I remember this was a pretty scandalous cover, Gen 13 number 12. I think there's, if I remember right, there's there's many variants on some of these. But this doesn't look like J. Scott Campbell work. It does on the cover. Some of these pages inside maybe don't. They must be. I mean, his name's all over the book, but I can't tell if this are official. Every image in there is his. Um, so this one kind of cracks me up. This is issue number five. At one point, I had like 30 copies of this. Uh, it was in a set that I, I, I bought uh, inventory from a comic book shop, and it just had so many issues of this particular issue. So I like had just ludicrous amounts and you get like a Bruce Campbell looking ripoff guy um gotta love Bruce Campbell and this is the kind of book he'd show up in but great cover great book um Gen 13 Interactive I don't remember as much about Interactive I remember the art in it was pretty wonky but it is what it is Oh, we get a reference to the Max there. Always got to love that. Grunge is the Max. I'm um, not sure what this one... This is This is Gen 12. I'm way less familiar with Gen 12. I know nothing about Gen 12. Uh, as I understand it, it is basically a boring old person ripoff of Gen 13. So, 
Um, Gen 12, issue number two. Yeah, I never had any interest in uh, in Gen 12 for some reason. Um, Ordinary Heroes. Seems, I know I've read this one before. I just cannot remember it. Um, a little bit more serious, a little more down to earth, if I remember right. A little bit darker story. And is this Hughes? This is like Hughes stuff. Yeah, Hughes. That's why they made so many of this ones, because it's got Hughes, Hughes work in it. Anyway, that's pretty cool. Um, the Unreal World. I don't remember anything about the Unreal World. But I'm not wild about the art. It actually looks bad. It looks like that guy who used to do uh, impulse stuff. It's kind of like half manga, half hideous. I don't like it at all. Uh, we got another Claremont book, which, uh, eh, whatever. Uh, another Claremont book. Yeah, it, I'm sorry. It just doesn't look like Gen 13. It's, it's, it's more modern. It's, it's something else. It's not the Gen 13 I was looking for. Um, and there, they did give me a few issues of it. For some reason, it was in the lot, not something I was... Uh, dying to have so but sometimes maybe when you sell it in a big lot that's how you get rid of stuff that you didn't want you, you just kind of throw it in there grunge goes ape over new york literally this is gen 13 number 46 so we still haven't we haven't gone like full-on manga covers yet um so that's good roxy looks a little bit older Oh, Caitlin. Oh, Caitlin. Lots going on in there. This, I think, this is issue number one, but I think this is... Yeah, this is the original miniseries. Yeah, Caitlin does not have her superpowers yet. So, this is this would be before any of that stuff. Um, Gen 13 Interactive, number one. I know I just came across another interactive. Um, and like I said, I don't remember anything about these, but the art was not terrible. It looks like the stuff that uh, the guy from Cat's Eye Deity used to draw. So, And then our last one is Gen 13 uh, Special. It just says Carney Folk. Uh, I'm assuming it refers to carnival workers. And uh, we're getting that. We're getting that that dark art style I don't like. It's like this looks like these pages. This looks like a, a DC Vertigo title, and I I don't I don't like that look in a comic. If it's a comic, I want it to be uh, like that, like a superhero juggling farm animals. That's perfect. Um, a little bit hideous on the art style, but funny enough, so I'll go with it. Uh, tattoo Man. I don't like whatever this art style is. That's that's not good. And then we go back to like the dark DC Vertigo looking stuff. Not, not wild about it. Anyway, so that is the set I got. I'm quite happy with it. I'm gonna pop that one right back up front. And probably slide these right off onto the floor and call it good. Anyway, that is my latest uh, big comic haul. Thank you guys so much for watching. I greatly appreciate it. Um, if you like the video, give it a thumbs up. And if you are interested in videos like this, take a look at the back catalog because there's hundreds of these. Like I've, I've done a lot of these videos and I, I just love looking at books and kind of just first impression. This is what I think of it. And so anyway, thank you guys for watching. That's my story. I'll catch you later.